It's like Joker Lucina. Joker dies, bar gets reset to a tiny bit. 20%. Two, two up tilts from Lucina on Rebel's Guard. He has Joker. It's awesome. He has Arsene, and it's just amazing. And right now, going with the best skin, by the way. The this best is, alternate skin. This is the one I use. This is the one I use. Hey. hey. This is the one that Six is using. And on Town and City, I feel like this is going to be a very dynamic match. There's a lot of ways that Robin can control the space, and Dill has very good awareness. If there's one thing to, to praise him as a competitor, it's his ability to recognize the situation and change up how he wants to play on the fly. Absolutely. Right now, Dill has been taking firm control of this game already as we've been talking. In the first 30 seconds, 91%. 91% and only taking a little over 20 right now. Really bringing it to uh, SXWX right now is House of 3000 Dill. And right now, oh, trying to go for some spike, but there's that forward air. Losing Arsene, but able to get back with the grappling hook. The backer sending him high and far. Not that far, though. I feel like Rising Dare would have been the option there, but great on six to recognize, like, all right, Dill's still going to box me off stage. Rob's just allowed to do that. I'm going to lose Arsene. And he still kept the pressure up. He recognized what tools he was able to get away with. Tries to go for that read. Tries to go for that up air. Not the up smash. Isn't that a confirm at this point? Well, Six didn't mash out. He just chilled in the ground, which I think is great to throw off the rhythm of Dill. But now look at the percentages that are on board. And like, really anything is killing at this point. Joker's not particularly heavy. But getting Arsene actually saving him. For those that aren't aware, when Arsene comes out, there's a couple of frames of invincibility. If you go through. But, uh... Oh my god, the strong forward smash of Arsene and Joker together. Very bad situation right now for Dill. So far off stage with a strong character like Arsene and Joker combined, and there's no more fuel. Yep. And we saw, I was saying, first 30 seconds, still had this in firm control. We're seeing a two stock lead already coming out for 6WX here. And I feel like that's just the fate of the matchup. Like, Rob is a larger character. It's a lot easier for combo oriented characters to get their little hit confirmed. <laughs> Even with the assistance of the rising platform, I don't think that was necessary. Dill trying to save off a little bit of the pressure. And I'm curious to see what he's going to do. I actually want to see Dill get a bit more like hands-on with how he's fighting Six. Get a bit more grapple-heavy, because like you mentioned, Rebel's Guard, you just get grabbed out of it, and then you're free combo food from there. And Rob is this odd hybrid of a zoner and a grappler. So if Dill wants to play a bit more of that heavy grabbing game, it can work out, but maybe a game two, a six takes a very convincing game one. Yeah, the more grapple game of Rob is really what's going to actually benefit Dill in this game right now, and I think that's what's going to be the death of six if he's not too careful. <laughs> I don't know what I'm watching over there, bro. Yeah, no, character wrestling is still happening. What is that? Game and watching? What is that? In the I room? don't know. I don't want to know. I don't even know, but game one, going to six WX pretty convincingly most of the time and what do you like I, I agree with that grapple play that I think Rob ha has one of the better better actual grapple games in this entire game I feel like for for what he has it's so deadly actually and spacing out with the oh uh, with these projectiles a little more can actually help out and yeah get a little more hands on with his offense here in game two Going back to town, I think it's a really smart idea. However, I feel like Joker's tools like control this stage incredibly well. I think Dill just needs to mix up how he wants to play because the projectile play wasn't working out too well for him. Offstage play was kind of disastrous, I'm not going to lie. And it's not really on Dill's fault. It's just that Joker, and especially with Arsene, Fix is so hard when he's playing along the last zone. And especially that Joker is one of the best characters in the game when it comes to edge guarding. Joker can easily, especially with Arsene, Joker can deal such massive damage and such massive knockback in no time at all. You saw most of the time that they were fighting off stage, it was towards the blast zone. And right now, Six is one move away from getting Arsene, and he already has it now. And now this is a situation where Dill kind of has to uh, change how he's playing right now. Because uh, one bad mistake Ooh. like that, that could have been really bad for him. And there's that bonus mess from center stage, killing. All right, now I'm see starting to see where the problems lie as far as Dill's play is concerned. And what I saw there, Jax, we saw tunnel vision, heavy tunnel vision coming from Dill. He ran it for that top. He ended up getting forward smashed for it. Things got a little screwy off there at the ledge, but Dill's starting to pick things back up. But I really hope that he just tries to focus a bit more 
on just keeping the pressure on Joker himself. Not even worrying about if Arsene's available, just like keep the pressure on constantly. Once again, Dill in an offstage situation, but the gauge for Arsene only at 50% right now. Dill able to get back, but Six immediately sending him back out. Now, here's the thing. One of the best tools in Joker's arsenal for edge guarding is Gun. Gun is really good, but for someone like Rob, wow. <laughs> What is, that, the, what is that, the Tetracarn? Is yeah, that what it is? Tetracarn is the uh, the physical reflector. Yeah. And it's such a it is the strongest counter in the game. Is it really? It is. It has the highest damage multiplier. But like as I was saying with like gun is usually considered one of Joker's best offstage options to especially edge guard. But with someone like Rob, it's not gonna be as effective just because of how Rob's recovery actually works. Send him, you can just keep him off stage a little bit longer, but you really want to get him to these last ones as fast as possible. So Gun is kind of eliminated in this process. On the note of Gun, though, <laughs> as still evens up the stock count, I feel like Gun is really good on stage, and we saw a, a glimpse of it from Six earlier. Down Gun is a great way to make your landings a little bit safer, and depending on your spacing, you can actually get like a confirm into something with it. And just chasing him far off. I mean, that grab a hook will let you do that, but that back air, just regular Joker back air, gonna be able to take it, and six now up 2-0 on Dill. Most of all these games have just been super convincing. Slice! God, God, I, Joker's move set's just so cool. I still, I'm still not over it. As someone who's played Persona 5 so recently, like, I'm not over it yet. He's, it helps that he's a good character. It, it, it absolutely <laughs> helps that he's a good character. Like, the fun, the fun never ends if you like what Joker's bringing to the table. Though, I do know Joker's got his own share of uh, haters. You know, when you're on the receiving end of all of this nonsense, it's not the most fun. Because you get to see the, because you see these Jokers now winning a lot of events, and immediately they start to mainly say, no, it's the character, not the player. But like the big one that everyone's been seeing is a player like MK Leo, who basically is at this point the number one player in the world. Right. And like I don't think that has anything to do with his character. I think his character definitely helps, but it's more coming from him than it is from actual from actually just Joker himself. It's not like a Bayo situation. And even at that, it's like MK Leo's Joker is very simple but effective. Where as I feel like a lot of players are still finding their footing with using what tools and what situations, like what aspects of Joker's kit you want to try and use and abuse more importantly. But we can discuss that more later as we have Six's Joker still on the field for Talented City a third time around. See if Dill is able to even things up here. And to be honest with you, Jax, I don't really know what aspects of like Dill's play or Rob's kit is really helping him at this point. I feel like he's just too big of a target, eating too much damage too often, and where the situation gets really dire, Dill tries to play from the ledge, which I feel is just not working out for him in this situation. No, I completely agree with you, Hangman, right now. This is just a really bad situation in these past two games, and the Tetracon just coming out and out. Such a good count, as you were saying. There's not much here that's giving Dill a true advantage right now. Almost everything that Dill's trying that's getting him a crooked, quick little advantage, Six has some sort of answers for. And that's just this character matchup right now. There's not much that uh, Dill can do in this situation, so you just basically have to try and out play him, trying to recover to the other side of the stage, he just has enough gas to make it, especially with that back air, giving him a little more, and there's that side B, gonna actually take the stock, and six, now down the stock, still taking the first stock in this game three now. I feel like the side B's a really dangerous tool that should be coming out a bit more often, it's a big risk, because if it gets Rebels guarded, that's just our sense out, just out and out, it will fill up the Rebels, uh, the Rebellion meter so heavily, but, it's going to help make those offstage scrambles work out incredibly heavily into Rob favor. Which well, there's that gun actually sending him a little bit into the blast zone. Most of what we've seen on the offstage game today has been in that blast zone. And that backer could have definitely done something. But right now, Dill taking it to six, almost sniping him there with that gyro. Yeah, six getting a bit antsy now with his, uh, his down beat. I feel like Tetracard's not going to be giving as many answers as he wants. And like, I feel like Makarakar and the, the reflector for projectiles is actually going to be even more of a detriment to Six than it would be to Dill. Just because it's going to lock Six in place 
just a little bit longer than he would really want without an actual answer to the situation at hand. And right now, Six just trying to space him out on the other side of the stage, looking for some sort of opening. But Dilla actually doing a much better job of keeping himself on the defensive and only really coming into the offensive when he knows he has the moment. And there is that Rebels guard, so dangerous. But Six at 149, still only at 25. But here comes this damage of Arsene now, and this is where it becomes very, very dangerous. Coming out that gyro, sending him off stage once again, making sure to go to that top platform. You know, just one thing I've noticed in this game three that's pretty different in Dill's play is he's he's opting to use forward tilt, jab, and down tilt a lot more than his projectile pressure that we've come used to. Well, yeah, because basically once you get to that Arsene, the projectiles become a detriment to him, actually, because of that, because uh, Tetracon is the physical. What is the special? Makarakon. Makarakon. Like, it's basically becoming to the point where once he gets our send, it's actually a detriment towards him because of that counter and that reflector. And right now, we're seeing that more physical because he's able to get more physical damage on him before our send comes out. And the second our send comes out, he's staying back a little more. But now Six trying to put up so much pressure on in such a short amount of time. Oh, no. Right, still taking a moment, shake it off, staying on the angel platform. Actually works really well for him because that's all little bits of time that the Rebellion Meter burns down a little bit. I'm actually surprised he hasn't been sitting on the Angel platform to burn meter just for free. Nonetheless, though, Dill's still in it. He's still got his stock, and Six kind of bleeding here on his last stock. To be honest with you, Drex, I feel like if Dill keeps his head in the game, we're very easily seeing ourselves go to a game four. I could easily see it right now because he's at a 113 and oh. just getting him off stage with multiple down tilts into that forward air. Six able to get back to stage, center stage, that gun with uh, clanking with the projectile, with the gyro there. Coming out, what? Six got to find something here. Got to find something to get a little bit more damage. Even game here, all things considered, especially as this battle brings itself to the ledge. You know, one little aspect of Wings of Rebellion, the, the upbeat with Arsene, that it, it keeps on finding its way into these plays where the beginning part of it, Joker is invincible. For all intents and purposes, it's not that great of a recovery because it's also incredibly easy to two frame. But that little bit of startup invincibility for him has protected Six on so many situations. It's actually kind of gross. Right now, the neutral coming out 168 for West, and that's gonna do it. Woo! He tried to challenge him with the side beat, but took a back air for his efforts at ledge. And Dill taking that game three, and now we're heading into a game four right now. Staying alive, man. But that was a rough game three for Dill. We saw an SD, we saw him get edge guarded to no end. Like, it's it's looking like a rough matchup. I'm, I don't think Dill is confident enough in any of the secondaries to pull them out for Six's Joker. No, because what does he have other than the Rob, really? He, has he could fall back to Diddy, which I do think Diddy can make it work in this matchup, but I don't know how well Dill is acclimated to Diddy's new tools in the current version of Ultimate. Yeah, because it's, it's been changed so recently, and probably for the better, but he's been sticking so much with this Rob, and not even at Smash Delphi, but at other events, I, I don't know how much practice he's actually gotten with that character. Nonetheless, I have a feeling Rob is sticking around, and I my only concern is hoping that Dill remembers the things that really worked out in there. We saw the, the close range boxing, we saw him take advantage of the fact that he could just chain his down, his down tilts get his forward air out, build up that easy damage he's constantly pushing out without having to worry about his projectiles. And now Six going with the counter pick of Battlefield. Actually, I think these tripods are going to benefit a lot more to the play of Joker, just a tiny bit. Still gives a little edge to, uh, I'd say it still definitely helps Rob a little more, but I think Joker will get the most out of these tripods right here going into this game for now. And a very classic way of playing Battlefields for zoning characters like Rob is to sort of defend the fort. You control the base platform, shark the triplats, and you can get a lot of like easy damage. I don't know if Dill is gonna want to play the matchup like that, but I feel like if he's forcing Six to like think hard about how he's landing and make decisions where he's gonna bring himself to the ledge out of his own accord, I think that's the best case scenario for Rob right now. Man. Dill just barely missing that down. It had a perfect opportunity there with a far recovery from Six. Six now with the Dio, just signed to get rid of it. Going to the other side of the stage. 
Wow, I like that bait out. Just the tiny little movements into the up air to bait an on ledge get up. Really nice job there from Dill. Like it's that smart play that we've come to appreciate from Dill, but I feel like in this matchup it's required. He needs to stay mixy at the ledge, otherwise it's gonna be super free for Six to be able to edge guard him. Be it like downward guns, down air while Arsene's on board, back airs against the stage being especially potent on battlefield. Like, there's a lot of little things that Dill has to worry about. He's got to keep in his mind, but he's staying afloat in the match so far. He's got a heavy percentage lead, but this is Joker we're talking about. It's not too bad of a worry for Six to build up the damage. No. And right now, Six at 150, still not with our center, has a little bit of ways to go, basically 75% full at this rate. I'd say maybe even 80, but right now, he won't even get that chance to bring out our center. Yeah. There's that down throw up smash right there. And now back down to 20% of the gauge. That was <laughs> barely hitting. Parrying that into the forward smash. Dilson all the way to the other side of the blast zone. It's been such a good move for Joker in this particular matchup just because it covers a good amount of space ahead of him. And then when Arsene is involved, it covers a bit higher and farther than usual, which is just a nightmare for Rob. Oh, hold My on. My God. Amazing little string coming out from Dill right there. And Dill just taking it to six now. And that was mostly just on Dill's great sense of awareness, too. Like, we didn't see the top. We just knew it was still on stage just from sound effects. But as soon as Dill got that chase going, that's it. It was down tilt city. I actually want to see six pull out Rebels guard a little more here. I feel like now. These attacks, like he's starting to, uh, Dill's starting to play a very, very more physical game instead of the throw game. And right now, we're rarely seeing the Rebels Guard come out as another down throw up smash is now the death of six. And Dill, all three stocks left still. He's big chilling, man. I think he's been playing this stage masterfully. And on top of that, one thing to know with these down throws that we've seen, Gun's gonna take the stock. Gun. Gun, gun, gun. Gun, gun. Um, Earlier in the set, we saw Dill try to go for down throw into the up air, and it just didn't work out for him. But now, he sees that Six isn't mixing up as heavily. We see that like the up is just working. Joker doesn't really have any options like in that situation. It's kind of hard for Six to get out of there for free. Absolutely, and now, with Arsene, now, what does Six have to do here? He has to play a little more aggressive, get in a lot more, down a full stock in percent also. There's that up smash coming out, 66% on to Dill, and here's Dill with the down tilt and the throws, not able to follow up, but getting another grab for his efforts, and another grab for his efforts, and there goes Arsene, just really waited out Arsene, getting these pummels in as much as he possibly could. That string was brilliant from Dill, and the reason was because he may not have built up that much damage on six, he might not have established that much control, but he established himself going to a game five, Fantastic, ripping the momentum away from six. We literally said two games ago that we didn't know the advantage of Rob against Joker and we couldn't find any in the play. As soon as we said that, something clicked. And now Dill is taking this to a game five. And pretty much that game four was pretty uh, like decisive. There is one thing in particular that I actually really liked out of Dill's play throughout all of game four that I don't even know if he was aware of. A lot of his strings while he was taking advantage of six were there is a lot of hits involved, maybe not as much damage, but heavy, like, long strings. And chipping away at Joker when he has Arsene helps break away that meter so fast. Like, in the last couple of strings, and especially the final string that led to Dill taking game four, it was just constant hit after hit after hit after hit. Arsene came out and was gone in that entire string. Like, Six didn't have an opportunity to take advantage of his win condition. And there. you can see Six right now really debating on whether or not he wants to actually go back to that Joker. We know he has that Sonic and Cinderella in that pocket, but is that going to be enough here? I mean, considering how convincing the first couple of games were, I really think he shouldn't switch off the Joker. And Cinderella especially is just a no-go for this one. And then Sonic, that's a really big gamble. Like, you have the speed to break zone, you have the combo potential, but... Hey, he he kind of picked this town and city. He's kind of picking the Sonic. I don't know. I think Dill's adaptation has become a little too much here, and I think the change of pace could be a definite benefit to Six as we go into this game five. And remember, this is losers. This is actually to get into top eight. So this is really this one of these plays is going home after this. 
Well, this is with the character that puts six on the map. Let's see if it can bring him into the top eight for tonight. Game five on town, like you mentioned, this is, I actually think this is still like a good situation for six. He just needs to make sure that he stays constantly adapted to how Dell can lock away space because with Gyro and Laser in mind, there's a lot of space that Sonic can't traverse safely. Absolutely. I feel like these triplats a little bit, or like e even the triplat form that is uh, Town and City, may benefit a little bit. He, Six had to be thinking of something here, but right now, Dill just spacing out with his gyro. Like he, Six knew he couldn't get in after that gyro, so he either had to go over him or just stay put, and he decided to stay put there. But now these up airs sending Dill high, 136, trying to go for that post back, but take the back air for his efforts. And Dill is on top now at 136%. I feel like Dill has gotten into the rhythm that he needs, where he can play comfortably, he can play to how he wants to with Rob, but he's still recognizing Six's really smart movement patterns, and he's just adapting. And look at this Look at string. this string! I thought he was going to carry him off the side, but the back here coming out from Six, 52% now, and the first stock of the game for Six WX. Like, side B could have made it, make it happen, but we didn't see it just yet from Dill. Nonetheless, though, it's still a fairly even fight. Like, even with this much percentage on on six, he's still playing that famous hit-and-run style that works really well with Sonic. He's just committing, I feel, to odder options when it comes to the combo game. And despite Rob's large body, he's not finding himself getting mixed too hard. Gyro sending out, and the laser coming out. Parrying the last hit of that gyro, actually. But right now, this is the problem now. Uh, Rob is pretty easily able to space out Sonic a little bit, and these spin dashes, which are like the key for Sonic, are really not being able to be used right now. Not up there right now. Dill's on top. Dill's doing a very good job against 6WX here in these passes. Are we going to see a reverse 3 0 possibly? My man's just on route to completely snatch this set away from 6, where if you looked at game one, all things considered, this looked like this was supposed to be 6 a set. He looked like he had this in the bag. But Dill's adaptation has been so good throughout the set. Little by little by little, 6 has just been run, running out of options. And even switching to his signature character, it's looking dire, but for both players, that's a phenomenal streak. My God! From Sonic is bringing us down to last stocks. Dress what this. a play. Now we're in the real high pressure situation. That's the 6WX I know and love. But right now, getting juggled by these up airs is 6WX able to get back onto stage. 89, 96%. This is a very bad situation for 6 here. He has to rack up damage super quick. And that back air is going to take it. And Dill with the first 3 0 oh, sending Pennsylvania's own back to Philadelphia. That was amazing play from Dill throughout this entire set. The fact that he was able to adapt from like such a grim situation. Like games one and two did not look like they were fun to play at all. But Dill was finding these little lights, these little bits of play that were working out. He put all of that together, kept himself alive by game three, and building up. Like, such a like strong reverse 3-0 over 6. Forced him to his original main. Forced him to play completely different. Dill just rolled with all of that momentum right on over him. Kill after this kill. This is the string I love right here. This was incredible play coming out from 6WX. But as amazing as that was, the efforts are a little in vain here. As all it takes is one back air to finish off the entire set. And Dill moving on to lose his top eight here at Smash Adelphia 2019. Amazing play coming out. But guys, that's actually going to...